Okay, so uh, today uh, I wanted to look at an, an issue that causes a lot of discussion about, oh, here's a contradiction, or oh, here's a contradiction, when it's actually a lot simpler than that. And it's something that once you understand it, you really don't even have to look at, um, uh, you start realizing that, that this is a completely different argument. It, it really doesn't have to do anything with the Bible so much it has to do with translations of the Bible. And once you realize that those are two distinct realms, then that really that really helps the dialogue to kind of progress more into finding solutions for the problems. Okay, so let's look at this. Let me get my deal out of the way here. Boop. Okay. The first thing that's important to note is that there are a lot of translations. Okay. Now, what is a translation? For a lot of people, a translation is synonymous with the thing, the original, whatever, in this case, with the Bible. But anybody who knows languages knows that that's just completely, I mean, that's just, there, there's no basis for that. When when you have a translation of something, it's always going to be inferior to the original. It's always going to have uh, some problems. Uh, if you've ever read um, ooh, the Iliad, there's, uh, there's a few different translations, and some of them... Uh, will kind of flow better, whereas other ones will be kind of um, brickish and, and, and slow. Uh, so I don't, don't know exactly how you would describe that. Kind of um, uninteresting, boring, bland. And, you know, they don't really necessarily capture it. And, um, you know, so there's, even with, with something like the Iliad, there's going to be differences in the translations. So it, it should go without without question, yet somehow this continues to be a problem with, aha, there's another, there's another Bible contradiction. It's not. Um, it's just something that, that common sense should help us with this one. Uh, a failure or a contradiction of a translation does not equal contradiction of the Bible. Okay, the Bible was not written in English. It has been translated into English from three languages. Okay, uh, a, a small part is in Aramaic. Um, a large part is in Hebrew, and another part is in uh, an ancient form of Greek called Koine Greek. Now, with those translations, there's going to be mistakes. Okay, there's numerous reasons for this. Um, the first being, as is the case for like the King James version or whatever, um, using a, a manuscripts translating from manuscripts that aren't um, overly there are better options. Um, another thing is that trans translations themselves make mistakes. And then there's another issue that there's some things that you don't know how to translate that unless you have more data. Um, this comes in the form of archaeology or history. This comes in the form of uh, other things, other writings to compare it to. This comes in the form of knowing the, the context and the culture. And sometimes these things kind of elude us on account of it being so old. Now, this isn't something that should worry us. It's not like the Bible is the only thing that has these issues. This is something you're just going to have this issue. It's 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 a part of history. It's a part of, of translations. There's no such thing as a perfect translation. There's no such thing as a fault-proof translation. So when you find something, a lot of times, before you even get there, is this a Bible contradiction, there's a much more interesting question that should be asked. Why was this translated like this? Are there other ways to translate this? And, uh, you know, just, just, some, just some starting things there. Um, now, any time that you have something that's translated, the bias or the, uh, the preconceived notions of the translator is going to come across. So that's one of the reasons why you want something that wasn't translated by an individual, but by a committee. And you want to know uh, who those people are. I mean, take for instance, the Jehovah's Witness have their own translation. Um, it's called the um, uh, New World Translation. And none of the translators are listed. So there's no way of knowing whether they're qualified to give these translations. Where did they study at? Who was? Who did they study under? There's no way of knowing. Then you have some that are translated by, by individuals. 
Um, besides the Phillips translation, most of these are, are, are pretty scary. Um, there, there's a few that have a few good things to say, but I mean, even even the Phillips translation, I, I wouldn't stake my life on it. Um, it. Some good examples of this would be like the Passion translation. It's, it's a newer translation. It's not completely finished, um, but they've done quite a few books, or he, he has done quite a few books. He has um, really no qualifications to be doing this, uh, but yet he still, you know, is translating the Bible, and that's just an example of something where you really have to be careful of the translation itself. Not only do translators make mistakes, but sometimes people who call themselves translators are not translators. So there's there's that. Failure or a contradiction of the translation does not equal a contradiction of the Bible itself. There is a certain amount of dialogue that has to take place. The problem is that a lot of times um, i found that in these conversations about contradictions in the Bible, people don't actually want to discover the truth. They have made up their mind. This is the fact. And my fact is that the Bible is full of contradictions. I'm not going to try to understand it. I'm going to just going to come to it with the preconceived notion that it has contradictions. So then any explanation you give isn't going to be good enough because I've already made my mind up. You know, and there's a, just kind of a failure to have a, a, an intelligent conversation. Uh, intelligent being, you know, where two people can learn something from each other. Where, okay, well, let's look at this. Instead of, I have all the answers, whatever you say is wrong. And uh, you know, there's a bigger lesson there than just um, disagreeing on the Bible. That, that's, that's a bigger lesson for, for politics. Uh, well, anybody on social media will know exactly what I'm talking about. There just needs to be more mutual respect and, and intelligence in conversations nowadays. So anyways, moving on to the second point. Um, then there's another issue uh, with really any kind of thing. Uh, and that's called the semantic range. Semantic range, okay? So what this means is that no two translation, no two languages, it's not, um, it's not a math formula, okay? It's not two plus two equals four. Um, no, no two languages are going to fit perfectly together. There, there's no word for word translation that doesn't exist. It's not possible to exist. Um, you've got two different languages. You've got two different cultures behind the languages. You've got um, just a lot of different issues, and so no word-for-word -word translation, that, that doesn't exist. Um, I, I, for instance, talk about literal translations, and I was watching a, a lecture by um, actually a, a great translator. His name is Bill Mounts or, or William Mounts, um, and he was actually talking about the idea that there is no such thing as a literal translation uh, because – you know, like it, it, it just every translation falls short of, of that, and it'll they'll add words or take away words to give clarity. They'll change the order of the words um, so that it makes more sense in English. Um, and so th there's a lot of a lot of real heavy questions there. And I think going into it with the idea of um, I don't want to learn either about history or about ancient languages or about the Bible, any of those things. I just want to believe what I want to believe. That's just not a real healthy idea. Uh, there's a lot of people who take their ideas of the Bible and, and do this thing too. I'm not just talking about people who don't believe in the Bible. I'm also talking about people who do believe in the Bible. Like here's a good example. Um, the Bible um, is infallible. Therefore, um, my Bible translation is infallible. What? Um, the Bible is infallible. Therefore... If we discover that one of the verses that was in uh, the King James Version probably wasn't in the original, we should just leave it in there because we've made the mistake for so long. Um, you know, another example of this would be like, okay, the flood. The Bible says itself in the book of Psalms that the flood was not global. And yet people still translate in Genesis where it talks about the flood, where it says over the whole world. When these these people were not thinking about and thinking those kinds of terms in in the terms of global things, they were you know and and so you have this word that yes it could be translated as the world, but in the context and especially given the clarification in the Book of Psalms, we know that it's talking about the whole area was flooded, maybe in the means of a tsunami or some kind of odd hurricane or something. But either way, that's more in the realm of possibility. It's not really something that, that requires that much faith to believe. I mean, it's something that you can imagine happening. Um, and yet, 
sticking with 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 the translation that just doesn't fit anymore. We have we have our uh, history has progressed, archaeology has progressed, our knowledge of the language itself has progressed. We don't have full knowledge in any of these areas. I'm not trying to mislead you. Anybody who says that we have full knowledge on anything with ancient history or archaeology is just lying to you. Um, you know, so we we have a lot more knowledge, and that that can help us in our translations. So instead of saying, okay, well, let's let's look at have we been historically translating these things wrong? Well, oftentimes religious people say, no, I don't want to have this conversation. We've translated it this way into English for the past hundred years, or unfortunately, four hundred years. So let's just go ahead and leave it. Let's leave the mistake and you know move along. I mean, take for instance uh, where Paul is talking about, or where where Jesus says. You know, if your if your brother sins against you, go to him and uh, and and try to try to make peace in the situation. And so then, okay, so only with men. Girls don't have to do this. Men don't have to do with girls. Girls don't have to do with men. It's just just for brothers. Okay, all right. So I mean that that's that's not really what that word means. It's more of we we would do well to translate it brothers and sisters and yet this has become a huge point of argument where religious people are unwilling to compromise no 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 adolfos is just brother it's like no and th this is something that bill mounts pointed out adolfos is not brother the word translated there is not brother the word tra the word there is adolfos and they have translated that into brother that does not mean that the word there is brother it means that the word there is adolfos you know, and I think that's a great point. Um, I think that he's right on the mark with this one. There's some things that on both sides, for and against the Bible, where there's just a failure to understand semantic range. So there is no word for word translation. Okay, individual words have a range of meaning. Okay, you can have some words that mean in this context they mean this, in this context they mean this, and then you have some words that really don't have a definition and and that's that's difficult and then you have different functional words um, things that are sometimes untranslatable things that are sometimes the definite article like here's an example that once again bill mounts brought up and i just think that he's once again spot on in a in, in a in a in a person's name okay uh so like jesus it would have the definite article this, if we were translating literal, would be the Jesus, but we don't talk like that in English. So instead, we just say Jesus. We don't say the Paul, we say Paul. And this is just a good example of, of how some things just don't really work like that. There's this word, uh, which is typically translated as the in, in Greek, uh, ha. But it can also be translated as that, which, uh, who... Um, and so you have this 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 wide range of what this word can be translated as, and so the question becomes, what does this word mean? And it's well, that's the problem is that what's the context? What are we looking at here? So to just say this word means this is to completely not understand semantic range. So there's no word for word translation. That that's that's a big issue there. The, the individual world, words have a range of meanings. Some words don't have a specific definition, which is what I just talked about with ha. Some cultures and languages use idioms, some don't, and others have thought processes that go on with their talking. So like when you're talking, it's more like you're 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 involved in a thought process, kind of like painting a mental picture. And then there's other languages like English, which are just kind of dull and uh, don't really do that. We talk in more literal and we don't talk in abstracts. We talk kind of in – now we use idioms, yes, absolutely. But when, when we're talking, we, we kind of just say what we, what we mean, and there's just a big difference there. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with this, then, then you probably haven't ever learned a second language, um, or you haven't learned a second language that's overly different than uh, than English. Uh, and then there's the issue of – well, lots of things are involved with that. So there is the semantic range. There's much that could be said about semantic range from people who are much more qualified than myself. And I'm not trying to, trying to say that I have full understanding. I'm just trying to once again – show the problem because once again you, you have people going into this conversation with oh here is my here's the answer and a lot of times it's a lot more more complicated than that i got in an argument uh on my youtube with a guy where i was i was trying to explain 
the semantic range of a word, and he wasn't getting it. Instead, he kept going back to how it was translated in this one verse. And so I kept trying to focus in on the semantic range, and I think that I just caused more confusion for the guy than, than – I think it would have been better to just answer the contradiction. Um, and so I've actually – I actually released a whole other video to talk about the contradiction itself, and that's where it says, you know, God's anger is forever. So is God's anger forever? Is it not forever? So, you know, the, but I, that's in another contradiction video. Um, more of the story being I tried to focus on a semantic range issue when – Anyways, you get what I'm saying. So, okay. So then the next thing, um, sometimes people go to lexicons who have no idea of the language itself. And uh, if you're interested, um, Bill Mounts has uh, – you can learn Greek or you can learn how to do uh, word studies where if you don't want to put forth the time and memorization involved in learning the language of, of the Koine Greek, you can still uh, learn how to do um, – word studies you can still learn how to how to look up and find out uh, about that it's a little bit more limited but it's a lot easier um, so uh, there's that and uh, you know a lot of times people use lexicons that they don't really know how to use them and they don't really know uh, they don't really understand uh, the range of possibilities so they'll go to the lexicon and they'll say okay this word means this see we have a contradiction here I looked it up in the lexicon and it's like, well, <laughs> you really ought to know a word before you know a language and that kind of stuff before you just start grasping it. And you see a lot of a lot of these televangelists do this kind of thing where they'll have no idea about Greek or Hebrew or but they'll go on and they'll latch onto a word and they'll just kind of make it into a whole sermon series because it preaches good. But it's not true, it just sounds good. And it, it kind of is a little bit difficult if you're not just one of the masses. You know, if you're someone who actually does understand, you're like, well, I'm trying to learn. Really, I am. I'm trying to be open to growing spiritually. It's just that, you know, the shallow teaching with people who don't understand the language is just a little old. So I'm definitely not saying, you know, oh, these atheists and agnostics who get on the – I'm, I'm not saying that. Yes, yes, they do do that as well. But the religious people are just as guilty of this where you go and I looked it up in a lexicon. I have no idea about how to use it, about the word occurrences. I haven't done any legwork. I just used a real basic lexicon. Here's an example right here. Uh, there's two two lexicons that I can think of. One's called um, Strong's Concordance, which by the way is not a lexicon. It's a concordance. Big difference there. And then the second one is uh, Vine's, Vine's Expository Dictionary. Okay. So let's let's talk about some let's talk about some differences here. A lexicon is going to take a word from from the language, okay, and it's going to give a real basic, kind of a generic um, idea for the word. It's not going to necessarily say every single time, every single occurrence of it. It's just going to say the major ways it's translated, that kind of stuff, okay. And then with this, there are some that are more or less reliable. For instance, if you're dealing with Hebrew, there's um, – it's called the Brown Drivers – Brown Driver Biggs um, Hebrew, uh, Hebrew lexicon. And uh, that's kind of like one of the standards. Or if you're dealing with Greek, it would be Thayer's, uh, Thayer's uh, Greek. Th these are two examples of just some real you know, trustworthy sources. What some people do is they go online and just – Find what they find, and it's just like, well, <laughs> just like when you're doing research, you have to find a reliable source. Wikipedia is not a reliable source. Um, what somebody said is not a reliable source. What I did on my own personal uh, study of a, of a language, I have no idea what it means. This is not a reliable source. You need to you need to find – either learn it yourself to put forth the time and the years involved or you know, find somebody who is a, a reliable witness of these things. So – Lexicons do have limits. That's a lexicon, okay? The next thing is a concordance. A concordance is basically like – it's kind of like a lexicon. Um, it'll show uh, what – okay, it'll take your English translation, and it'll say, okay, this word here is strong. And then you look it up in there, and it'll say what that word is translated from. 
And then in some of them, it'll have in the back kind of just a real, real brief kind of thing like the Strong's Concordance does. So you look up that word and you look it up in uh, in the back where it gives a little definition. It'll give a real basic de definition. Once again, even more more basic than, than a lexicon. This isn't a real deep word study. Um, lexicons will typically have like where the word occurs in different places. Uh, a concordance, um, the definition part won't. The concordance itself will have a complete list of what um, of those words that are translated into that English word, but it's it's a different ballpark. And then there's a dictionary. A dictionary is where they take a word and they just kind of try and explain that word. A dictionary is not the same as understanding semantic range, and I hope that you get I hope that you get the differences here. Um, so really, just just uh, the main point here being that a lot of times translation there will be problems with translations, there will be contradictions that aren't really there. They're just that there's a mistake found in a translation and people just kind of run with it, and so without without knowing the situation, without knowing why they did, they did they translate it like that, without knowing any of that stuff, they just kind of run with it. Um, another example would be that the Bible seems to imply that there was death before Adam and Eve messed up in the Garden of Eden. Before that, there was death. And yet, uh, a lot of times, conservative religious people aren't really willing to admit that. And so they'll say something like this, I don't believe in evolution. Okay, well then where did the tiger come from? Well, the tiger didn't used to eat meat, so you're saying it evolved to eat meat? Well, no, because I don't believe in evolution. So it's like, well, hold on, that doesn't make sense. And so anyways, the, the Bible kind of talks about how there was death before the mistake, but then people kind of add their own theology into it. Because Adam and Eve sinned, that introduced death and decay into the world. Well, no, it really didn't, though. Um, it really didn't. And so then you get to some parts of the Bible that seem like a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. It's your understanding of what the Bible says. I've gone to the Bible already making up my mind what, 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 ha what life was like back then because I went to Sunday school growing up or because I this or that or the other thing. And so there's already that, that those lenses on. So everything that I see is going to be colored with those lenses. It's like these lenses, they're supposed to get, get down on blue light. Okay. Now, obviously, you see that they're colored. If I wear them, things the color of things aren't going to be the same as they as they actually are. It's it's exactly that, exactly that. Um, so how do we get past that problem? We study, we check, we we ask the questions. Are we translating this wrong? But sometimes people, Christians, religious people are just, no, I'm not going to ask these questions. We're, we just are right about everything, and everybody else is wrong about everything. And so then an atheist comes by and says, well, so you're believing in an outdated book, and it's wrong, and here's all the proof that it's wrong. And neither of these people are willing to budge on anything. And so they're not learning from each other. They're just being stubborn. And uh, stubbornness also, uh, oftentimes causes stupidity. And so then there just gets to the point of name-calling. Pointlessness, just complete pointlessness. So, okay, let's talk. Let's talk about um, the KJV because this is this is, and whenever I'm I'm talking about contradictions, this is something that people always bring up a verse from the King James version to prove that the Bible has contradictions. Oh boy, about ninety percent of the time that somebody comes up with with a contradiction from the Bible, it, it's because that they're using the King James as their proof text. It's it's just unbelievable how people still use this thing. The first obvious problem, which I, I genuinely wish more people understood, is that it's just outdated. The word of God never gets outdated. I didn't I didn't say that the Bible was outdated. I said that the King James Version was outdated. It's very hard to have these kind of conversations because people go to it with the preconceived notion that I'm right and everybody else is wrong. And how do you have an intelligent conversation with that kind of arrogance? You can't. And so it just degrades into, into name-calling and just stupid unreasonableness. They just stop it there, okay? So the King James is an incredibly outdated translation. It's just so incredibly outdated. The first issue being that it was originally translated in the 1600s, Okay. Words don't even mean the same thing. They're not spelled the same way. They're just 
Okay, so then the, the, the King James has got undergone numerous updates, and just to the point of, of not even – it's just a mess. So then you get it to today, we have all, with all these updates, it still has things in it that, that are messed up, and I'll get to that in just a second. But then the issue being it still is worded in a way that people don't actually talk anymore. Why continue to word something in a way that people don't actively speak? They're not going to understand it. Why use words in your translation that people don't get? And then not only that, but English word in the English language is always changing. Here's an example: is irregardless, which is not a word, is now a word in the English dictionary. Yeah. Why? Because people used it wrong for so long that now they just said, okay, well, it's an English word now. That's because English is still a living language. It's still changing. It still has things being added. Like, for instance, yeet is now – it's an English word. I don't know if it's been recognized in the dictionary. I didn't check that one, but it is used in common vernacular, and people use it, and – so it's it's a word now, you know, and, and that will continue to happen when these people grow up and they have kids of their own and their kids are making up their own stupid little words. Then those are going to be words. That's how how living languages work. And the, the King James just hasn't hasn't made that leap. There's a lot of translations actually that haven't made that step towards the right direction. So then there's the second major issue with the King James. It doesn't use overly reliable manuscripts. Basically, it used what it had, and then we found something better. And instead of adapting, nope, we're going to stick with this. Okay, you could do that, but it's just kind of no reason for it. There's no reason to be stubborn about that. Um, so once again, we're talking about a copy that was less reliable. We're not talking about the original. There's nothing wrong with the original. I'm not saying anything like that. The Bible is a very well-attested book. We have so many different copies. And why would you waste your time hanging on to one copy when we have so many different ones and so many older ones? And we can compare the different copies that we have. And there is somewhere between a 97 to a 99 percent um, – what's it called? Uh, rate of um, – Accuracy, accuracy rate. That means the only – with all all the areas in the Bible that we're not 100 percent sure how to translate it, this only adds up to 3 percent. And none of that 3 percent takes – at worst, it's more likely closer to about 1. Uh, so – but none of these – none of those – none of that margin of error takes away from any serious Christian doctrine. And – that's just something that, that is phenomenal given the book's age. Um, if, you're, if you're a student of history, you, you understand that we can date the books of the law, the books supposedly written by Moses, to being written sometime after 1400 and sometime before 1200 BC. And the events we can date to the exact time that they were supposed to have happened and all these different things that just tie the book into where it was. We're talking about something that was written in 1400 BC. We're talking about a 3400 book, 3400 year old book. And then you're talking about the New Testament, and it's just all these different things, and it's just unbelievable. Why, why hold on to manuscripts that we found a more reliable manuscript to translate? For? Why? Why would you do that? Um, so then another big issue with the King James has numerous translation issues, which then which then translate into contradictions because it just has issues. Everywhere it has issues. The, one example is that the verses um, that probably were not in the originals are held on to in the King James. Why? Because in some of the some of the manuscripts that we found, that verse was there, and so because we included it in, in the older translations 400 years ago, we're going to keep on making that same mistake over and over again. The NIV tried to correct this by taking out those verses, and instead they got blasted by 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 Christians. Oh, you're taking verses out of the Bible. Only the ones that were added later. <laughs> it's the uh, anyways. It's just it's just one of those situations. 
So if you're looking at a contradiction, the first thing before you even look to see, is this a Bible contradiction? Before you even get there, you need to start, start at step one. Don't hop to step five. Start at step one. Is this a translation issue or is it a Bible issue? Because there's a complete world apart. And okay, so I hope that this was somewhat... Um, explanatory somewhat uh, clarifying um but okay so you guys have a great uh great rest of the day